After years of dreaming and months of hard work, we finally made it to Scotland, the land of mountains and locks, castles and whiskey. Hi, we're Laura and Stu. We moved aboard our 36-foot sailboat Delfino 10 days ago and we just finished sailing non-stop from Cornwall to Scotland. We're just beginning our Scottish adventure, but we have one final sail before we can get off the boat and start exploring, which became a little bit more competitive than we'd planned. We are now in a race. Too fast, too furious. My family were meeting us in Portavadi, a marina, hotel and spa 30 nautical miles from Troon. This was our first real taste of sailing in Scotland, and the scenery delivered big time. Our route took us past the Isle of Arran, which people call Scotland in miniature because of its range of landscapes, sandy beaches, lush forests and dramatic volcanic mountains. So we are currently sailing from Troon to Portavadi to meet my family. And my mum has just messaged to say that they are two hours away. Um, we are also 10 nautical miles away, which should be two hours. So we are now in a race. Who, who do you think is going to win? Us or them? I think they'll win. You think, think they'll, they'll win? win yeah. Well, dinner's booked for eight, so I mean, I mean, I <laughs> we've got to at least get there for eight. I think we're going to be late. <laughs> you think we're going to be late? But we're okay. pushing the boat hard. I mean, yeah. there's a hell of a hill going on. We're, yeah, we're at between 25 and 30 degrees of heel. A little bit uncomfortable on board, but we are... Uh, yeah, We've got the competitive spirit, we want to win the race, so let's see how we do. So they were on the ferry 20 minutes ago. Get, once they get off the ferry, it's 50 minutes to drive there. We are currently an hour away, so I think it is going to be close. Hand steering for extra speed. Too fast, too furious. Oh, well, we've got a dinner to beat them to. <laughs> 6.3 knots, I know, yeah! Right? I think this might be one of the fastest, at least the fastest sensation of sailing we've had. Yeah, I think so. Which is good, because your dad is definitely speeding. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some cheating going on in the car. Definitely. the wind's easy, which makes sense because we're passing that headland over there. Yeah, we're down to 5.9 knots. I mean, they're going to beat us to dinner. Updates. We have just tied off the lines and are walking up to reception. And we've just seen my parents in their apartment. Um, so, it was a draw. We both arrived at pretty much exactly the same time, <laughs> but at least we didn't lose, so. Not sure about that. We may not have won the race, but at least we made it to dinner. It poured with rain for our first few days. So while we did do a fair bit of hiking and mountain biking, unfortunately the only footage I have from those days is this random chicken. Thanks, Stu. We took the ferry across Loch Fine to check out Tarbot Seafood Festival, which turned out to have minimal fish, but lots of live music and beer, which was fine by us. We managed to squeeze in a sail with my family, which they said they all enjoyed at the time. Did you your sunglasses on? No, it's protecting me from the water. <laughs> We checked out the Crinan Canal on foot, as sadly they had a temporary draft restriction, thanks to all of the dry weather in May and June, that meant we couldn't take Delfino through the canal as we'd originally planned. Stu became obsessed with temperate rainforests. Very temperate rainforests. And we checked out the grounds of Inverary Castle. After a stop for some refreshments, we felt brave enough to launch the drone for the first time, which ended up being cut short when birds started dive bombing it.
Despite the typical Scottish weather, we had a great week. But sadly, the time had come for my family to head home and us to get back to taking care of Delfino. Today I'm fixing the things that we broke while we were crossing the Irish Sea. First up, we had a bit of a problem with what we thought was our transmission but turned out to be our stone gland. During that whole figuring out process, we put um, the only oil that we had on board into the transmission. It wasn't the technically correct oil, but it got us to where we were going, or so we thought. Um, so now I've got to take that out and put in the correct oil, which we've managed to get delivered to this marina. And if I get time, the other thing that I'm going to tackle is we lost the shackle that holds the bottom of our Genoa down um, at the front of the boat. So we've got a new one of those to put on. I'm going to make sure that we zip tie it this time so that it doesn't fall off again. Um, and hopefully that will see us for another couple of hundred nautical miles. Please enjoy the following clips of the first time I've ever changed oil in anything. After trying and failing to wedge a tray underneath our transmission, I resorted to manually pumping out the oil. I took out about 240 mils and then about 110 mils. So I'm going to put about 350 mils of gear oil back in. So got my gear oil, got my measuring cup, got my funnel, got my paper towel for when I inevitably spill it all over the floor. And let's see how we do. Let's dipstick this and see. Good. I think we are right in between the lines. One issue, one problem rectified. Hopefully, hopefully I haven't just made it worse. After a day of boat jobs, we were ready to leave Port of Ardy and head for Campbelltown. This was another 30 nautical mile hop for us, in protected waters between the Isle of Arran and the Mull of Kintyre. Although these clips don't look like it, we left at 5.30am to catch the best tide for our trip. We had 15 to 20 knots of breeze forward of the beam and another chance to take in the beautiful Arran scenery. To make sure we had the full Scottish experience, it was obviously raining, but the views from the boat more than made up for getting a bit wet on the way. The weather continued to get worse after we arrived in Campbelltown, and although we checked the forecast and knew bad weather was coming, we knew it was going to be really bad when we saw all the seagulls come into the harbour for shelter. The next day the weather improved and we headed out to explore the town. Once hailed as the whisky capital of the world, Campbelltown was home to over 30 distilleries during its peak in the 19th century and developed its own unique style of whisky. Today however, there are only three distilleries left. We toured Springbank, who do 100% of the production process on site using traditional production methods, which is apparently unique among Scottish distilleries. Sadly, we haven't been in Scotland for long enough at this point for me to fully appreciate the tasting. <laughs> Not a fan. Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we sail around the infamous Mull of Kintyre and explore the island of Gear. <laughs>